All right, I'm gonna teach you guys a little bit about something. So this is a sunbeam snake. So these come from tropical Asia. Uh, so it's an Indonesian snake that is uh, in the, the pet trade, but often we have problems with sunbeam snakes. I truly love sunbeam snakes. So let's take a look. So this guy, if I'm looking at this guy, you got a little nose rub. And so this is absolutely an imported animal. And it comes with problems. So what I do is I look at the newspaper and this has been eating really well. But in that newspaper, I also happen to notice this, that, and that. So these are two, see that one moving? So the one moving, all right, that's a, that's a nematode. Masquerade round worm, whatever. So you can see that moving around. So that's living in the gastrointestinal tract of this sunbeam snake. So what are these guys? All right, so let's take a, take a peek at these guys. So this horrific thing, you can watch them, they'll, they'll move really slow. If you look really close, you see them moving? And uh, those are segmented worms. So those are tapeworms. And these live in the gastrointestinal system of this sunbeam snake. So what happens is the sunbeam snake will, in its travels, will ingest a lot of amphibians, lizards, rodents, probably other snakes. And when it's ingesting those animals, it's actually also ingesting the flora in that, that animal's gut, in that animal's body. And what happens is it ingests its parasite load. And in some of those cases, that now introduces this parasite into the GI tract of this host. And now it can complete its life cycle. So in some cases, like the tapeworms, they're going to live in the gastrointestinal system and they're going to uh, leave, they're going to uh, leave egg, egg cases. So they're going to create uh, eggs and then the eggs are going to get pooped out in the environment and other creatures are going to pick that up like tadpoles and stuff like that and they ingest it and then that tadpole now infects itself with these uh, eggs and then we have the parasite you know once again going into its host and then this guy comes along and eats it and we help finish that cycle but there's really complex life cycles parasites i'm just giving very very generalized things well anyways since it is a parasite it is not good for the animal to have this in its gastrointestinal system so a big giant worm load like this can definitely uh, challenge the resources of the animal, the quality of that animal's health, because the animal is losing nutrition to these parasites. But more importantly, these parasites will often travel. Uh, so if we look at like nematodes and pentastoma worms and all that, these little nasty things will actually often leave the gastrointestinal system. They'll migrate into the body cavity, they'll move into organs, they freely will move into blood vessels. Sometimes it cause uh, hemorrhaging, uh, destruction of organs. So if we do like trematodes, like liver flukes, which are very you know closely related to these nasty tapeworms, they'll go into the liver, they'll go into different organs, and then they will populate and they'll become bloodborne and throughout the animal, the animal becomes incredibly parasitized. So what I need to do to fix this problem, I need to give this animal a wormer. And the wormer in this case needs to be something, I need to hit these tapeworms, those nasties, and I need to hit these roundworm ascarids. And generally, most often there's two different types of wormers. So we have droncet. Droncet is effective against trematodes and cestodes like tapeworms, whereas trematodes, I mean, excuse me, as uh, roundworms, ascarids, and nematodes, these are uh, generally treated with uh, panicure, so that's fenobenazole. Well, there happens to also be a wormer 
that we can use to actually nail both of these things. That actually has an effective uh, use on both of these parasites. So it's gonna equally treat cestodes and trematodes. So tapeworms and liver fluke, uh, actually just flukes, such things like that, and roundworms, ascarids, pinworms, and whatever. And that happens to be valbendazole, which is albendazole. And this is a really good uh, wormer. It comes in a suspension. You can get it on Jeffers Online. Uh, they use it you know, heavily for goats and sheep and all sorts of farm animals. And you can also use it for reptiles. A uh, good safe treatment is 50 milligram per kilogram. And you're gonna see it's gonna be an oral suspension. So it's gonna tell you how many milligrams are in one ml, which is one cc. So you'd be doing something like that. So then the next step is we would weigh this animal and we would then shake this bottle and we would draw out whatever it needs to be, whatever the treatment is. And I dose this animal once and then I dose it seven days later and I dose it seven days later and maybe even another seven days later. And what we're doing, we're interrupting the life cycle of these parasites because these parasites are not going to do this animal any favor. We're going to want to get this out of the animal. The animal will have far better success. And when you keep these animals clean, they're not re-ingesting this because we're actually in captivity, we're feeding them mammals, generally like rodents or defrosted rodents. So they're not ingesting or getting infected with a new uh, parasite load. Mm -hmm. And uh, another very, very important thing, keep that water clean. Really keep it clean because when they're drinking, they'll have uh, parasites in their lungs and they'll often uh, kick up some uh, sputum with uh, parasite eggs in that where then they swallow that and they ingest it. But they'll also deposit that in the water dish. So if you had two snakes together and you had one that was parasitized, it can go visit a water dish, drink from that, and then spread it to the other animal. Plus through feces. So you make sure after you deal with this, you wash your hands because we do not want to be the host. And so we don't want to ingest it. So we don't want to put our fingers in our mouth stick our fingers up our nose and our eyes, whatever. So let's just be a little bit clear, but this is definitely something that's gonna be solvable and treatable, but understanding what you're doing. So what we would do, we would take the snake, and if we weigh it in pounds, we're gonna divide it by 2.2, and that's gonna convert pounds to kilograms. Then the dose would be 50 milligram per kilogram. So let's say, let's just say that that was one kilogram. And then you multiply that by 50. And then we look at the suspension. So uh, I have to go read. You have to go look at this, this one dilution because it's different suspensions, it's different dilutions. So that effectively means how many milligrams is in one ml? Remember, one ml is one cc. So with fendabendazole, it would be 100 milligram per, per kilogram. So we would take the animal, weigh it by 2.2, multiply it by 100, and then the suspension is 100 milligrams in every cc. So we would take that and we would take the kilograms, multiply it by the dose, which is 100 milligram per kilogram, and then what that equals, x, then we take x, we divide that by 100, which is the suspension. How many milligrams are in every cc liquid measurement of something like Panicure? And that would then be the dose. So if it's like, if it says it's 0.3, we wanna draw out, you know, 0.3. And we would then give that to the animal orally and we would create a little schedule. We treat it every seven days. And what this actually does is, uh, and let's say fendabendazole, so Panicure, what it does is it limits the uptake of these parasites uh, of like sugars and it causes the parasite to essentially starve to death and it fails to find the, the host animal as an environment where it can succeed and it ultimately diminishes these parasites over time and kills them off. And that's pretty much it, but I wanted to teach you guys something. Once again, this is a bubblegum video, so tell me what you guys think of it. And uh, thank you for watching Kevin teaching about something really gross.
boy, is that a wonderful little snake. Hi. Right. All right, we're going to go fix her. 